Hi Ellington, hey. As promised, this is part two of Posy Pooch from Miss Billingham. Now, we got to the point where Posy Pooch had brought another Tibetan Mastiff, the huge bear-like dogs, and the bear, because they were a girl and a boy, they had puppies. Okay, so let's see. In no time, the 99 puppies had the run of the entire house. There was far too many of them to train. So they were pooping in pan pots, climbing on the, each other's shoulders to steal Peach's sweets from the top shelf of the fridge, ripping the girls' school books to shreds, chewing everything in sight, including Peach's toes, jumping in the pond, then drying themselves off by shaking water all over the little girl, peeing in Peach's shoes, charging up the stairs and knocking Peach's clean over. The girl would then tumble down the stairs on her bottom, blowing off right next to her face and then scrambling away with speed, hogging the remote so Peaches couldn't watch her favourite cartoons on telly. Instead, the puppies would only click onto the dog-themed films. As for Peaches, she was forced out of her bedroom entirely. Her mother had decided the bedroom now needed to be a playroom for the puppies. The girl took to sleeping on the sofa, would be woken up by a mountain of mud squatting on her head. Ugh, get off! As for her father, he had been moved out of the bedroom entirely, as his wife was now sleeping in the dog basket. Posy had given over their double bed for Nigel and Nigella, and Dad had no choice but to sleep in the greenhouse in the garden. It wasn't ideal, as the neighbour could see him taking off his pyjamas in the morning, as the old saying goes, people in glass houses shouldn't undress in daylight. Finally, Peach and her father couldn't take any more and one night they confronted Mum. Please, 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 can we give some of these puppies away, the girl pleaded. Away? Why on earth would we give any of them away? Mum was shocked. Because we have 101 dogs in this house, exclaimed Dad. Well, I have some good news. Nigella is expecting puppies again. No, screamed Peaches and Dad. Oh yes, with any luck, there might be another 99 puppies running around soon. Please no, exploded Dad. It's just 200 dogs, nothing really. Oh, that reminds me, I need the greenhouse back as soon as of course the sofa for the new puppies why do you want us to sleep then they said mum thought for a moment both of you could always sleep in dustbins the dustbins peaches couldn't believe what she was hearing yes uh, i'm sure you'll get used to sleeping upright now out of my way the pair of you i have 100 and dogs 101 dogs to look after shoo 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 it's time to take all the pups to the, for their hot milk, biscuits and a bedtime story. Who gives their dog biscuits, hot milk and reads them a bedtime story? You! Oh my word. Finally Peaches decided enough was enough. So that night when it was dark, the girl got off her sofa and tiptoed out of the greenhouse. There was her father making the best of trying to sleep on a bag of soil. Psst! Psst! Dad! She hissed, wanting her mother to not know she was conspiring with her dad. Oh, hello, love, said Dad, who was now looked completely beaten by life. He was unshaven, unwashed, and his hair was sticking up in the most ludicrous way. One side of his face was black with soil. What are you doing now? I mean, off the sofa, Dad whispered. We need to do something about all these dogs. We cannot live like this, Dad. I know, but what? Soon we're going to be sharing the house with 200 dogs, Peaches. I've been thinking, Dad. Nigel is scared of cats, right? Yeah, yeah, he sure is. He runs a mile whenever he sees one. Well, uh, 
Maybe Nigella and all the 99 puppies are scared of cats too. Maybe all Tibetan Mastiffs are. So, we don't have a cat, said Dad. Not yet. But why don't we buy a kitten, said Peaches. You are a genius, said Dad. Beaches blushed. First thing that morning while pa Posy was bathing the 101 dogs, Peaches and Dad raced to the local pet store and they found the most adorable, cute, fluffy, white kitten named Snowflake. When they arrived home, Peaches hid Snowflake under her coat. Once inside the hallway of the house, the little girl called out, Mother! I am far too busy preparing 200 steaks for the doggy's breakfast. Stop bothering me, she hollered from the kitchen. Oh, don't worry, Mother. I picked up something they'll much prefer, called Peaches. Are you sure about this, said Dad. We can always get another kitten. What? spluttered Dad. I'm joking, of course. Don't worry, I will keep a firm hold of Snowflake, she replied, taking out of the kitten from under her coat. The adorable little thing had a little stroke. If you're sure, said Dad. The girl nodded and shouted, Come on, doggies! In an instant, 101 dogs were charging towards them. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Nigel led the pack with Nigella and the 99 puppies not far behind. Look, Nigel, shouted the girl, showing the kitten. Meow. The sight of the little fluffy white kitten was enough to send the shaking Nigel into a fit of howling. Oh! As Peaches had predicted, all the other dogs were scared of the little two kitten too. They all began howling. Oh! Hiss, hissed Snowflake. The dogs were terrified. They scrambled each over each other and they bounced back up the stairwell. They flooded into the kitchen, a tsunami of Tibetan Mastiffs, and swept Mum clean off her feet. Ugh. She flew into the air. The dogs charged to the back door, smashing it off its hinges. Posy Pump Pooch landed on Nigel's back. Thump. The dogs scattered into the garden, bursting through the fence, bash, and disappearing off into the distance. Mum was still riding on Nigel's back and the other dogs showed no signs of slowing down. Help! she cried. But she was far too far away and nothing or her just daughter or husband could do. Soon the giant dogs were nothing more than dots on the horizon. Not sure where they were all off to in such a hurry, remarked Dad. By the look of it, said Peaches, Nigel is running all the way back to Tibet. They fell on the floor laughing. Purr, purred the kitten. I really do like that story. Now if you want to find out lots and lots of different stories about the world's worst parents have a look at this book. If you want drop me a message and I can read another story for you if that's what you want. Okay now I really enjoyed reading to you. I hope you're all well and you're staying nice and safe and I will hopefully see you soon. Bye!